Hi everyone, my name is Adam, uh, I'm part of SimVascular and uh, today I'm going to be showing you how to take a segmented surface uh, from a different image segmentation software and importing it into SimVascular. Um, so here's a document that's kind of got uh, the steps that we're going to go through today. Uh, the open source packages that you need uh, in order to do this is Paraview, um, Open Flipper, and obviously some vascular because that's what we're using. Um, but the steps we're going to go through is basically uh, number one, you export the image segmentation uh, as a mesh. Uh, then you can open this in Paraview and use filters to remove ends of the vessels, and we'll show that. Um, then a little smoothing and remeshing and open flipper before we bring it into some vascular and prepare it for meshing. So uh, these are kind of the overall steps and we'll go through those. Uh, so first thing, um, here's uh, one of some image segmentation software called ITK Snap. There's obviously other image segmentation softwares, um, but I think in um, ITK Snap, what you do after creating basically your segmented surface is you go to this segmentation tab and go export as surface mesh. Um, so then with this, you can export it as a VTK polydata or an STL. And that's what we're going to want to do. Um, we've done this previously, so I'll just show it now. Um, but importing this into Paraview, this is Paraview. Um, we see this surface. I've actually gone through already and clipped many of the ends, but I'll show you how to do that as well. Um, so as you can see, this one is in aorta. Uh, it's got some of the femoral arteries as well, but I've clipped most of these the ends here already. Um, so what we do to clip is we go to filters and you can find it here under alphabetical and clip. And the easiest way to do this is to go down here to the clip type and change it to box. And then what you can do is resize your box to about the scale of the vessel you're looking at. So I'm going to clip this, this only one I've got left up here. So we scale and we'll bring it in here. And you want to be careful because you obviously don't want to clip other parts of your surface. So get it really nice. And then when when it looks good, you want to make sure your, your clip is pretty much perpendicular to your vessel wall. Um, and you're not cutting off too much of it. But then you can hit apply. And you can see I've I've clipped the end of that vessel. Um, so that's actually what I've gone through and done for, for the rest of these vessels. But after, after you've done this, there are a few steps you want to do before exporting this from Paraview. First, you want to uh, run a filter called Extract Surface. Um, as it is after clipping, um, the data set here is actually what's called an unstructured grid. Um, so just a series of points and their connectivity. And what we want to do is extract the surface to make it a poly polygonal surface. So what we do is extract surface. And then after doing this, uh, we want to run another a filter uh, called, in my case, actually, what I want to do is a filter called transform. Because um, what happened actually from the export of ITK Snap is it scaled my model up by 10 because it, it thought the units were millimeters and I'm actually dealing with a model in centimeters. So this is easy to do as well in Paraview. Obviously you want to check to make sure um, you're consistent with your units. Um, so you may not have to perform this if you're actually working in millimeters and want your model to be in millimeters, but there's this transform filter and I can scale everything here and each. Um, 
in each direction by 0.1. And so now I've got a model that's scaled to centimeters. And then the last filter I want to run is a filter called triangulate. And what this is going to do is sometimes exporting from ITK Snap as well as other image segmentation softwares, it'll export a surface that is mostly um, triangles, but you may get the odd not triangle. And then in, in addition, when you do the clipping, it can cause some irregularity. So we'll just apply this filter called triangulate. And you can see that I actually did add some num cells if you look here at the number of cells. So there were some that weren't triangles. So now we've got this surface that's completely um, clipped at all the surfaces and triangulated. So we'll save the data as an STL and just save it as you want. I call mine uh, a or ephemeral clipped. Um, so then now what we can do is open this in open flipper. This is open flipper here. Um, it provides some surface remeshing and smoothing operations. So we'll open it here. And zoom in. As you can see, the, the surface is still pretty rough. Um, so what we want to do is run first the smoothing. So these is, this is the default settings for the smoother. And I just run a smooth. And as you can see, it smooths the surface as it should. Um, so then now actually what we're going to do is click, go up to remesher click and estimate parameters and so as you can see it's done a minimum length of 0 0.06 and a maximum of 0 0.07 so we want to remember that for later but uh, we do uh, remesh then And so we've got a remeshed surface now. As you can see, looks a little bit nicer than before. But now we have this to a point where it should be a well triangulated surface, and we can import this into some vascular and prepare it for meshing. So we save this now. Um, you can save it as a VTK or an STL. Um, so I've already done that. And then, so now, we can bring this into some vascular. This is some vascular's interface. Um, and we go to this polydata tab, which has um, this other smoothing tab, which combines some smoothing operations so, and filling of holes. So we'll load in our data set. Um, and here and load it and we can visualize our surface so here's our surface if we push the W button we can see it as a wireframe if we push E we can see it with edges and if we push S we see it as a surface so we can visualize this push R to um, reset to the center of the screen um, and then we can actually smooth some more if we want or decimate which reduces the number of triangles um, but actually all we need to do here with this is fill holes so we'll click fill holes and as you can see it's um, completed the entire surface it's kept all these clipped vessels and now we have a surface that can be named and sent to the mesher. So we'll save this and you can save it as every, whatever you want. I've saved it as this filled. Um, so then what we'll do now is we can read it into this boundaries tab and
after we've read it in, what we can do is there's this extract boundaries filter. And this will, by the angle specified, um, extract basically regions of your surface. So uh, cells with the angle greater than 50 degrees between their normals will be extracted. So we'll run this filter. And now what we can do is go to the model tab. You can see you've got face IDs here. We'll kind of see what that means. But if we hit P, uh, the button P on the keyboard while holding it over a surface, we select a surface. Um, so we basically filtered out all these different regions based on the angle between the normals of cells. And what you can do is you can go through now and name all these surfaces. So you can name a surface whatever you want and it'll show up. Um, but there's a lot of surfaces here so I've actually already done this. Um, and I'll kind of show, show that. I've named all these surfaces already. I've left a couple off so I can show you. Um, but this one here, name superior set value when you hit set value updates with the name and I believe I left the inlet yeah so here's our inlet you can name it here set value and so as you can see I, I've named pretty much every surface here but there's another surface that doesn't show up and what, one of the things you can do to visualize the surface is select it and then hit change color this has gone through in more detail in the video on preparing a mesh or preparing a surface for meshing, but I'll show it a little bit now. Um, so you can change the color there, and if we select the wall now and basically hide the wall a little bit, we should be able to find this surface, which might be hiding. Sometimes um, you can find these these no-name surfaces come from um, just uh, weird points on your surface or um, let's see those, there it is we'll kind of take a look at that but for me this one came because I was just a little bit sloppy in clipping my vessels. Um, so there it is. On the other side of this vessel. Okay, so there it is. We'll take the opacity away. But as you can see, they do have the the angle difference between them and that's why they've been identified as a different region. But if I don't want to go back and clip all my vessels again, it's a long process. Um, what we can do is we can now go to this uh, polydata tab and there's this button here called add no name faces to wall and what this will do is all these names, these faces that haven't been given a name will be just combined in the wall surface. So that's what we'll do. And now it's all one surface as you can see. Um, so we've named our entire surface and we can now save this so just save model and you can save it as whatever you'd like I saved it as named um, and then what you're going to want to do to mesh this is take it to TetGen the TetGen tab and make sure you've specified that using TetGen and a polydata surface and load in your named and once you've done that actually the f the first thing usually you want to do in a complicated model like this is just run a surface mesh, surface mesh to make sure that everywhere is meshed correctly before trying to run a volume um, so the only parameter that really gets set for surface meshing is this mesh edge size. So 
I'll put it to 0.07 because if you remember from before, it was about 0.05 to or 0.06 to 0.07, um, and that gave a decent surface. So we'll use that. If you don't have that um, kind of from beforehand, what the, one of the things you can do is in this model tab, you can select uh, one of your surfaces, say a small one, and hit this calculate area button, and you get an area, and from that you can calculate an edge size that might make, make sense for your mesh. Um, so what we can do is we can actually run that. I've run that already, so we don't have to sit and wait for it. Um, but here's kind of our surface uh, after the remeshing. Um, I'm just going to show just the exterior surface mesh and not the, the surface beforehand. But as you can see, this does a pretty good job uh, with the surface mesh. And you want to make sure that these areas with the small vessels aren't deteriorate, deteriorated at any point before trying to run your volume mesh, because that's obviously going to cause issues. Um, so it looks pretty good. So now what we can do is we can set volume, mesh the volume as well, and set these filters, uh, these optimization and quality filters to something that makes sense. Usually if I like my surface, I'll hit this retain exact surface mesh button. Um, and then we can run that. Um, so I've actually already run that. Um, and as you can see, there's it creates a pretty big mesh because this is a pretty complicated model, but five million elements. And we can kind of look at this a little bit. It should look pretty much the same as before because I've hit this retain exact surface mesh for volume mesh button. But um, we can save this as well, select a directory, and write the files, the mesh files. And so what I've done actually is opened one of the mesh files in a pair view. Uh, because pair view, you can visualize things a little bit easier. There's some nice filters. So actually what I'm going to do is show the interior of this mesh by doing this extract cells by region. Um, I go through some of this more in detail in the video on um, um, inspecting a mesh with pair view. But as you can see, we can kind of see some of the interior elements of our mesh. And uh, looks like it does a pretty good job of tetrahedralizing the entire volume. Um, so that's kind of the whole process in going from image segmentation from outside some vascular to meshing inside, inside some vascular. Um, but once again, you'll need pair view, open flipper, and then some vascular. And uh, you'll want to export from the uh, image segmentation software. Open in pair view and use the clip filters. Uh, don't forget to use the transform filter if you need it and the triangulation. And then uh, open it in open flipper and run a smoothing operation and a remeshing operation. And then uh, at the end, open it in some vascular and do all the preparatory operations for uh, meshing with some vascular and then actually mesh it. Um, so thank you for listening. I hope this was helpful and uh, check out some of our other videos on uh, some vascular. All right. Thank you.